Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Ryan Bergar. I'm Stephen Lim. And I'm Shane Maday. And this is a podcast where we chat about whatever's on our minds every week. This week we jump into dreams. Flossing. Candle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always just kind of just thrown off by Shane's at the end. Uh, last week I was, you know, stoked about the magic, but We candle. talked about magic quite a bit. We did. We did. You did a kind lot of, of magic. Uh, More magic than I would want to talk about, because again, I, I, I'm not a magic fan. Although, I've got, I've grown to it a little bit. That's right. Yeah, I do like Magic: The Gathering, the card game. Love the card game. I would game. love. Wait, do you play Magic: The Gathering? Yes. I'd like to get that going here at Watcher. Are you back? Like, well, I think Ryan and I were talking about this recently. I, I want to experience the joy of opening a, a pack. You know, I miss opening packs of like a, a nice juicy pack of Pokemon cards and hoping you get something nice inside. Um, I have a confession about that. What? That I want to make on this podcast. Which is what? The only thing I've ever stolen from a store <gasps> was a booster pack of Pokemon cards. You've stolen before? Did you do it out of necessity or for thrill? Greed? Yeah, thrill. Have we talked thrill. about this on this pod yet? <laughs> have we talked about times we shoplifted? Crimes? My, that was my one time. I And I have... Never lived it down. I feel so guilty. But I did get a Raichu, a holographic Raichu out of that, which I then traded immediately for a Charizard. So, you know what? It's worth it. I've, hey. I've only stolen one time, but then I put it back because I was so guilty. Well, what do you take? I took one of those like little five-cent packs of Juicy Fruit, and then I walked outside, and I was like, what am I doing? And I walked back in, and I put it back. What? Juicy Fruit. That's right, Juicy now, Fruit. Now, was the voice in your head your like your mother saying, Right. No, it was me. I had a pretty strong like sense of right and wrong growing up to an almost kind of like debilitating degree. And uh I I would have lost sleep for weeks if I had done that. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I know Shane's shoplifted before. I know what he's ta- taken well, as well. I, I don't think I have. You stole an L. That wasn't for sale. <laughs> an L? <laughs> That was just thievery. That wasn't shoplifting. I was... mean, you could say it was th- shoplifting, thievery, the same thing. I mean, they're basically cousins. I stole and it. What from are a, cousins? Really? I stole it from a bank. He stole oh, an, an owl. owl. An owl. I had an L. I was like, what? No, I was... remember the owl story. Yes. Yeah, the only a... people who were stealing owls are the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> uh-huh. You are a Chargers fan, and you That's say true. that. That's true. We don't. Which, nobody's gonna understand this reference. We don't steal owls. We gift them. Uh, yeah. But Shane did steal a, an owl statue. I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> so the thrill. Yeah, they're they're pretty commonplace. I think it was before I knew that they just sold them at like Home Depot, but there was a bank in our town that had an owl. I think to keep crows away. Yeah. Mm. Maybe geese. Oh, probably geese. Do you geese still have crows. it? Uh, yes, it's in my parents' backyard. Incredible. Yeah. I I well, the, I would always drive by the bank, and I'm like, why does that bank have an owl statue? How heavy Wh- was which it? Which bank is this? Can you... Uh... Plug it was prank. like a national chain. I don't remember what what uh, he's got to protect specific himself. Specific chain it was. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much information. Right, exactly. But I remember just driving past it all the time. And one night I was driving home at like two a.m. and I just I was like, nobody's at that bank right now. Pulled up to the bank, ran and grabbed the owl, put it in my trunk. How heavy are we talking? Did you have to waddle back to your car? It was like um, do the shit walk. It was like bolted to a, a like a landscaping bolted. Yeah, it was like had metal fasteners and was like screwed into a big. Cement. You break out like a Phillips head screwdriver and get that bad boy. <laughs> no, off I there, just or? took the whole. I took the whole cement slab. Oh well, you're real strong with the slab. Yeah, it, which is still attached to the owl. Yeah, it is. I took you a slab ripped this from the cement. Like I'm trying to pick like incredible. No, you Hulk know, style? like a, a landscaping. Like uh, it was almost like a stepping stone. You know, sometimes in in gardens they'll have like a. Oh a, yeah, yeah. A circular. And then you lift it up and you find roly polies under it. Yes, you find roly polies under <laughs> it. Can I change my topic to roly polies? Dude, I fucking love roly polies. Oh, let's talk about roly polies. No, I hate roly polies. I still have my topic. I want to talk about roly polies. I hate bugs. Are are roly polies crustaceans? I would think so. They look like a shell. And they have all those funny little feet. I I used to love making the roly polies get in the ball form. And I would just hold it. Isn't that the joy of it? And you're not. It's not malicious. Well, I mean, I didn't do anything. I mean, you seem like the kind of kid that was burning bugs with like a magnifying glass. I was. No, no, no. I seem like. No, I wasn't doing that at all. He was probably eating them. I would eat bugs here and there. But I, <laughs> it's even worse. That's part of nature. Um, no, I wouldn't. Inf- and and that is, you know, giving them back to the earth. I don't know about that. That's Monkeys. Not... I I think if I've you're told taking you... shits outside, then yes. But if you're taking a shit into a toilet, so I don't know if necessarily that logic follows. I mean, whatever. Um, 
I remember seeing a, a film about uh, Lucy, the Australopithecine. Who, you talk about her all the yeah, time. She she would put a long blade of grass or a stick into a termite mound and take it out and just go. Hurp. And I did that on the playground with ants. Mm, weird. Uh, you know, hmm. you could have died. No, no, no. Not with ants. Ants are good. They're you like sure? sprinkles. I bet you if I was an ant, it is just as scary, if not scarier, to watch a giant human with its big eyeballs putting like uh, putting a little stick into my home and then taking my ant and just... <laughs> it's like some War eating, of the World type eating stuff. Them mm-hmm. yeah. Eating them alive. Eating them alive. That's just as scary as someone burning them with the magnifying glass. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Though, to be fair, I have burned a spider alive. Uh, in college, we had a spider problem in our in our garage, and they were just everywhere. We couldn't get rid of them, and so one day I, I took one of the spiders and I put it in a big gulp cup in the middle of the garage and I set it on fire and I left its burnt carcass there just as a reminder to all the that's other spiders. Pretty, that's pretty fucked, man. We had no spiders after that. Yeah, well, th- that's not that's a thing. not the why, spiders they, they aren't. Oh, dude, oh, we, they I let them like, know. Oh, you gotta let them know. It's not like they're I, I, they're not I said, crows. I said it before. I burned the spider. You know, crows, I was like, I want that. this to be a lesson for all of you. You Take can do all that your with eyeballs. crows. Crows, crows will do that with crows. That? You know. well, crows are smart. Well, they know people. Crows know people. And crows, they tell other crows about people. Crows are one of the few animals that use tools. If there's a, th- that's true. They use what? little hooks. I'm telling you, go on to YouTube and watch videos of crows solving puzzles. It's, they're it'll just as scary. Your, it'll blow your mind. This is like when I was talking about firehawks and Shane was like, that's not a real thing. And you it, got my ass. Wait, it's fuck. You know pop- what a firehawk is, Stephen? Uh, no, you guys talked about this. It's, in the bird episode, right? Of Weird One yes, of the World? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. It's, a, it's a bird that will find a stick that's on fire. And then it will fly to another part of the forest, drop it, set that part of the forest on fire so all the animals scurry away from it. And then it will use that to draw them out so it can kill the animals. Very Thanos-like. But crows will specifically, if, let's say Ryan's out there living on the countryside and uh, a crow comes and he, you know, starts waving his pitchfork at it or throwing rocks at it. Yeah. That crow will go tell other crows, it will communicate to the other crows about what Ryan looks like. They'll be like, that's a scary dude. And Same thing like, with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes remember if you uh, swat at them, they won't. They'll stay away for about a day. What? Yeah, they'll remember you for a day. Mosquitoes, if you swat at them, they actually have a survival instinct inside of them that will be like, "Oh, I'm gonna avoid that person." But then they're stupid, so they'll forget it after a By while. By the way, Ryan, you, I, I, I have a question because no one has ever butt dialed me as often as you have. <laughs> Wait, oh yeah, that happened to me this weekend you, too. You left me a two minute voicemail. I just heard you talking about mosquitoes the whole time. <laughs> oh my god, dude, I fucking hate them. I hate but them so much. No one in my life has ever done this to me as often. What? How does this happen on your phone? Well, because I have on my phone, I have I have a favorites list on yeah. my phone. I have a favorites list too. Okay. Just, I've and never you just hit it. I've never accidentally. So what happens on is I I accidentally. Just I somehow this always comes up. Or it's, I I use the favorites list all the time to call people or to text. Yeah, and I think sometimes I'll leave it on the screen and then I'll put it in my. But then you, my everybody gets hit hit up that day. Look at this favorites shame a day right there. But Stephen Lim one spot under. Oh man, you play your cards right, Stephen. You can move a couple up. It's a bit rankings. of a MySpace situation. Hey, if you if you play your cards right, you can move up one. Yeah, you know I don't care. Move me down. I don't want those butt dials. <laughs> That's what he says that now, but I know inside he's like, what do I have to do? It was funny because I saw I had a missed call and I was like, oh, Ryan called me and I was about to call you back and then I saw a minute and 45 <laughs> voicemail and I was like, what on earth um, could he have been? And I expected wait, you to be can like- we, can, we sh- can we talk about what time you guys ca- you got called? Because I have one that happened on Saturday oh, let me see. at 12.40 p.m. What was, was it anything eventful? The transcription was just five words. Now, where are you doing? What? That's what I said. This is what uh, Siri transcribed. What was I doing on Saturday? Mine was Sunday at 12.57 well, p.m. Different days? You're just like <laughs> yeah. sniping people on <laughs> different hours of the day? That's good. I do hate mosquitoes, though. I have to say. <laughs> I, I'm sure this is going to sound ignorant because they must do something no, great for, for for the natural environment. I'm sure they're they're important to some sort of... Hey, hold on. We're going to shoot Maker's 46. Oh, we were taking shots of, 90, uh, of uh, Maker's Mark 46. <laughs> Incredible. Really exciting stuff there. Look, I'm sure the mosquitoes are important to some sort of ecosystem. I hate them so much. There's a mos- there's mosquitoes in LA. This now all of a sudden there's mosquitoes in LA. Well, there- they, they were there was a big um, accidental import that happened. Right, it was on one of those bamboo mosquitoes. trees. Right. Yeah, something like that. If whoever that person is, 
that person, they should be put in prison forever for bringing these mosquitoes. I'm not. Over. I'm not against that. Actually, these they're these tiger mosquitoes that are I like hate them. They're really smart. They're the ankle biters. They they're also strong. They lay low. They lay low. They and they bite you more than once. Yeah, I found their bites are are strong, but for me at least, they go away very quickly. The thing is, They're like an hour. This also they... contributed to the bad sleep I had last night because we saw one in the house, <gasps> and then I couldn't catch it. And then I was, I could swear that I, when I was sleeping, it was landing on me. I just thought it was in the room. Yeah. And then I looked up: Do mosquitoes hide under blankets, like in like your sheets? Because I was convinced. Oh, do they? That this little motherfucker was tagging me up under my sheets. Yeah. And I don't think so. No, you know what gets craziest is when they're biting you in places where you're already covered. Like these new mosquitoes are go are penetrating jeans. Yeah, it's true. How? Do you have standing water anywhere in the house? Well, he's in got house he's outside. got that he's got that pool. pool. Well, the pool is no, like moving though, right? No, it's no, not. It's, it's, it's standing it's water. Standing. It's just totally placid. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I did I have managed to catch a lot of them using the uh, the picture show method. Which is something I looked up. What is the? Pi- it's. <laughs> Are you playing Pictionary? Mari right walked in on me doing this the other day, and she thought I was insane. But I was laying in my bed. If you lay in your bed like this, oh, you, you told and me. And you about put this. your knee, and you put your knees up like this, and you have, if you have white sheet, like a white sheet over you, your knees, your 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 knees will make kind of like a white screen that you could kind of use to see the mosquito because it's hard to see them sometimes. And then you take a, uh. You just breathe really hard, or you sometimes you could even take like an iPhone or an iPad, put it on your chest to emit light, and then you just go like this. <sighs> and they'll come over, and once they come over, you see them really clearly against the white of your knees, and then you just smash them. And I killed like five like that. And then I put their bodies right by the bed just You're so sicko. I could let them this know. This doesn't do anything. I think it does. No, it doesn't. Bang! You know what that is? You just shot me. Yeah, no, no, that's the starter pistol because the holiday season has begun. That's right. That's where we eat, be merry, and drink. That's right. A lot. Yes. But you know what? Nothing kills cheer faster than that rough next day after a night of sipping on the nog. Mm, I do love some nog. I like to celebrate. I like to drink my nog. But yeah, I, you know, I do have stuff to do. I got I got holiday shopping to do. I can't afford to be down the next morning. I got to be strong. That's well, right. now there's a better way, baby. What? What? Zbiotics, pre-alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, Alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Zbiotics pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow morning. This holiday season, give your friends and family a gift they will actually want and use with Zbiotics. Go to zbiotics.com slash watcher. To get 15% off your first order when you use Watcher at checkout, Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason at all, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head over to zbiotics.com slash watcher and use the code watcher at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Speaking and- of that, though, because you were talking about putting that spider out. Yeah. Um, I... I, I was never malicious toward bugs as a child, but the one thing that I would do, which I do think is all natural and totally above board, is like taking an ant and throwing it in a spider web and watching the spider come out. That is twisted. Wow, that, that, it was really fun. That is disgusting. <laughs> and you're, you're doing uh, an unkindness to one bug, but then the spider, he's having a great Dude, time. Dude, that is the most... <laughs> You've never done that? No. That's, oh. that's some serial killer shit. No, no, no. That's it would, fun. It would be very funny to watch you be a god of a planet and yeah, just seeing what you did. Those were some of my favorite video games growing up. There were video <laughs> games where you were god. There was this game series called Black and White. Did you ever play that, Matt? <laughs> Why do you only know Because I knew that. It? I don't know. I get the vibes from Matt <laughs> that he was out there playing Black and White. Yeah, I played it. If Shane was a guy, he'd be doing that thing like in Roller Coaster Tycoon when you could pick someone up with like a crane, Absolutely. and then he would be dropping humans into like, actually, a, like a crocodile pit. Ryan, you, I kind of want you to play black and white because the whole premise of the game was you were God, yeah, and you would like st- sort of start these civilizations, and your on-screen presence is just a hand, yeah, and 
as the game goes on, you either have a nice hand like this or the worse you get, it just turns more like devilish. <laughs> oh, incredible. So you could literally just like pick people up from their homes and like throw them at a mountain. We should play that for in survival mode. <laughs> yeah, it would be really We should do like retro games for a season. I would love to see you guys play Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, dude, I would lose my mind playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. It that would suck though one. when people didn't like my rides and then I would punish them. I, for some reason, I got on, I think because I was such a big Maxis head, you know, they did SimCity and yeah. before it just sort of turned into EA. I think they bought them out. But I got on the track of like the Roller Coaster Tycoon alternate games. Like Zoo Tycoon. Or no, like Sim Theme Park oh, and Sim Coaster. Interesting. Uh, which were always like a little more whimsical. I'm never a big Sim. The thing I had issues with those is it just wasn't as much about the theme park or the roller coasters. Because I would design some fucking sick ass roller coasters the thing that sim theme park had going for it is theming the lands were like yeah, sci-fi haunted it was cool. it is nice there was sim ant was also really fun along those lines because uh you could be a colony of ants there's a new video game coming out where you do play an ant in a colony of ants but it's like photorealistic oh, it looks shit. stunning that sounds cool yeah God, i would lose so many days playing roller coaster tycoon and building it's a great game Oh, yeah. Well, we should probably get into some of the topics that we were here to talk about. But I think Matt actually has some interesting Matt, bug. you got bug facts? Yeah. So the um, roly-poly or the pill bug is the only crustacean that is adapted to live on land. Is that so? That's yeah, badass, right about dude. That. Yeah. Hey, it's like reverse Bigfoot. You know what always made me confused? <laughs> what? Is that <laughs> reverse Bigfoot. Do you have more bug facts? I got more bug facts. Okay. Is that, well, if the roly-polies are under those, like, little stepping stones, how yeah, do they yeah. not get crushed? Um... Because they're generally between the stone and like dirt or something. So, you know, they, mm. they, but it's different for bugs. Interesting. <laughs> I've, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I'm going to soft pitch it here. I don't know if I'm going to, I want to do this with Mark, but Mark and I have talked about doing a bug show. Well, would, would well, you do yeah, like scenarios, like hypotheticals or? No, we talk about bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Is this so a, a podcast? Bug podcast. Well, we've talked about animals in general, like each episode being about a different animal and kind yeah. of digging in deep. I've I've uh become enamored with them just because I've I've done deep dives on certain like I've I've read a few books about beavers, I've read a few books about coyotes, oh, I've read beavers. a lot of birds. I find myself gravitating toward a lot of like natural books. Uh mm. and they're they're just always fascinating. You There's probably would like the book I read, Humanimal. That sounds interesting. That's What's the it book. About? It's the book about uh, animals that have evolved to be similar to humans in terms of some of the characteristics. That's where I learned about crows oh. using tools. Yeah. That's also where I learned about the firehawk. Yeah. Monkey. monkey I have that book at of... my house. I, just I saw a monkey it. smoking a cigarette. That's no funny. way. <laughs> hey, remember that the video of the guy who bought a monkey? <laughs> oh God! Can we please show that in the pod? Well, it won't, Wait, it won't be really. Wait, it, Steven, you're gonna love it. It won't the video. be. It won't be good though for audio listeners because. No, like, I think it will be. It's crazy. There's a guy who bought a monkey. The video is titled POV, You uh, Bought a Monkey. <laughs> real, real quick, I do want to say, I, I I want to encourage people to listen to this on, you know, the podcast apps like Apple, Spotify. But you're not making a big case of that. This is this is definitely a, vid, a video cast situation. Here. I mean, POV, You Got a Monkey. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at him go. Look at him go. He's, he's just bouncing around the walls. He's doing that thing where like oh! <laughs> he belly flopped into a pool into a bathtub. Incredible. Wait. And he's is it gnawing at his arm? Also, when he bounces oh off the walls, God. so good. It's it's really incredible. Uh, don't buy monkey. Don't, by the way. Don't get one. That, don't that get is a like monkey. A cat and a dog as if they merge and become a super animal. That was crazy. You can't be buying monkeys. Um any other bug facts, man? I just I did fact check the mosquito thing because well, they don't have brains, right? They may have like a brain, but they they're not like they. Oh, I better stay away from that guy. No, they only it only lasts for a couple hours, and then they. What does it say? But they they can remember your scent and that you are mm. kind of. Uh, but it's a specific type of mosquito. Mm. I think it's these super ones. These fucking the tiger mosquitoes. It's the one that that d bag brought over from somewhere. I can't remember where he brought it. But. And then this is not. Um, I didn't just look this up, but I know that beavers change their uh, habitat more than any other species other than humans. They like shopping around. I'm telling you, the book that I read. It's called Eager. Um, Fuck Eager. yeah, dude! It's a That's whole good. book about beavers, and if you read that book, you will be convinced without a doubt that the beaver is maybe the most influential animal on this planet I believe outside it. of humans. I think that without reading the book. So it's, the book will just solidify my opinion. They're, yeah, they shape the landscape. Is there uh, a chapter a, on their chunky tails? 
Um, they they go into the tails. What are they, about the are they working twenty four or seven? Basically, like what's the situation with beavers? They I, uh, work work is an animal working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, they're just like building and they and... do build a lot. They sort of build and then you know live where they built. So they they mm. sort of reside. They're, they're basically my spirit animal. That's Beaver Gara is a thing. You would the book is so fascinating. It's really I, all right. I really... I'm gonna read the book to learn about. <laughs> that's no, the best it's... title i've heard for a book since uh our friend brandon smith sent me a book title <laughs> it's a book about a haunted house called man fuck this house <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny it's eager is also pretty good it's so good uh great great writing um we let's get to- topics yeah topics who are we gonna start with who do we start with last week let's start with shane we never start, well, with, start with me because i think we will want to start with me well, why all right because I my topic is candle. Is it from Lazy Acres? This, this is, is a candle I bought from Lazy Acres. Oh, oh my god, dude! They they have to be paying you at this point. No, well I wish they would so I could afford another one of these twenty dollar candles. <laughs> That's standard fare for candles. Is it? What is, yeah, what candles are expensive. Man. My issue is it's a soy candle, mm-hmm. and I'm not much of a soy boy. Candles, soy candles don't give off as strong of a scent as a classic wax. I'm not sure if they're better for the environment or or what. Does it have a wooden wick? No. That's the best, because then you get the crackle. I do like the crackle of a woodwick, yeah. Woodwick. I got really into those over the pandemic. Um, I bought one. I bought two, actually. One is at my home right now. What's it called? Flavor? The one that I bought for a home was called Baked Pumpkin. Okay. Mm. This one is called Harvest Bourbon. Mm. Interesting. I'm not a big Good whiskey names. and scents guy, but I, I, I'm Let's curious. Let's see. Uh, do you guys want to give it a whiff? I find it to be too much. Uh, the only reason I bought this is because I was waiting for my coffee for so long that I was like, I guess I'll buy something. <laughs> That's here. their strategy over I there. See how, I see how that It's works. a bit sweet. Bad customer service. It's you buy more sweet, stuff. But I find when you when you light them, the sweetness is not ever as intense as as just a full whiff. Oh, wait. So, our postman like here. That. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smell it. I'm gonna but I will it. say that I am not a good identifier of good scents. Are you going to eat, you? You eat on the show? No, no. I'm just gonna make sure that no one Good. takes from it. That's too much for you. It's oh, way man. too much. It's just too whiskey. No, I love that. I don't like whiskey as a scent. Like, can not... we burn that a little bit? And... Oh, we're gonna be burning it for the rest of the episode. Oh heck yes. Where's Ryan going? Going to grab our food. Nice. Well, we're not gonna eat that during the podcast. Is this staying in? Good. It is. It's no secret, folks. I love coffee. I'm a real mud puppy. Heck, I'll get up early to make sure I've got time to pop by my favorite beanery for a nice hot cup of Joe. But when you know it. The line's too long. It costs too much, and heaven forbid, they make it wrong. Well, AeroPress aims to make those kind of struggles a distant memory. AeroPress is like a French press, only better. It's the only press that uses a patented three-in-one brew technology combining the best of several brew methods into one portable device for a completely unique and delicious flavor profile. Smooth, rich, and full-bodied, without the bitterness and grit found in other presses. And as a bonus, AeroPress can brew thousands of recipes. AeroPress travels better than others, too. It's compact and incredibly durable. That means you'll never have to endure terrible coffee at the hotel, on the job, or on an adventure ever again. It brews and cleans in less than two minutes. Just add medium fine grounds, pour in hot water, stir for five seconds, brew for 30 seconds, then press into your favorite mug and enjoy. Thoughtful, proven, and under $50. AeroPress is the perfect gift or stocking stuffer for every coffee lover in your life this holiday season. Do not settle for less than the best. They'll love it. AeroPress is shockingly affordable, less than 50 bucks, and we've got an incredible offer for our audience. Visit AeroPress.com slash PW, that's A-E-R-O-P-R-E-S-S dot com slash PW, and use the promo code PW to save 20%. That's AeroPress.com slash PW, and be sure to use code PW at checkout to save 20%. It's time to ditch the drive through Toss the French press and say yes to better mornings fueled by better coffee. AeroPress ships to the USA and over 60 countries around the world. And we thank AeroPress for sponsoring our wonderful show. Did you also buy that lighter from Lazy Acres? No, this was here at the office. Ooh. Man, I grew up, my mom, my mom is a big sense person. And she literally has like those Febreze things, the small little plugins in every outlet in my house. And candles in every room of the house. She's 
crazy crazy for smells i like it when i go over to a person's uh, like i've never been a big glade plug-in guy mm. i am a big incense guy though i haven't been really lighting those lately i like um uh red pine incense they're like uh they just mm. kind of smell like burning like a fire like a like a burning wood yeah. scent. not because like incense smells i don't just too much i incense reminds me too much of like going home to see my like grandparents yeah like the strong incense that they would burn uh I, I i'm not into it either i don't like my home to smell like a record store you know mm. or like what do you a, want it to smell like uh like fi- like fi- like fire a nice firewood something mm-hmm. something natural a nice uh juniper ridge makes really nice uh incense that i like this is really getting this is getting good right that's nice i actually had that in our office and i was burning it yesterday mm. cuz like everybody else in this office, I feel like Lizzie. Well, that office, Sam. Is, they is, got they got candle game going in there. That office is uh, pristine. The yeah. way they set that up, we got we need somebody. Our office to, sucks <laughs> to, to design That's our the boy, office. The boys' room. It really looks like three guys who. I've got two boxes that say Shane's desk. No offense to Ryan, but he pitched this setup, and I was like, I don't know about that, and it's fine. You Basically, think we could rearrange? the three desks that we have are like in the middle of the room and we're just facing each other. But I, I feel like it's just not good and I don't know how to fix it. As a as a kid, I would always um, rearrange my furniture in my room. I would Did you do, do that? that all the time. Oh, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. So fun. It was always one of my great thrills as a child. Uh, and even like when I was in high school, lived at my parents' house, I would always be like, you know what? It's been a year or two. Let's mix it up. Uh, I was doing every three months. And I would, uh, every three months? <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. You know what I would do? Would I, uh, and I actually got this tip from a friend of mine who was a graphic designer at the time. Uh, she would uh, basically mock up her room in Photoshop or uh, Illustrator oh. and have everything the correct dimensions and would sort of arrange it yeah. uh, in the, you know, to make sure it all yeah. fit. Because that was a thing before you rearranged. You were like, I don't know if this is going to work, but, but I've got an it. idea, man. Yeah. Rearranging furniture was my favorite thing as a kid, probably to this day. It's a lot of fun. Second to, uh, <laughs> you know, in history, you learn about like Alexander the Great and like all these like, you know, yeah, yeah. people. I thought it'd be funny to like change my name to. So <laughs> as a third grader. I like said, like legally or, or no, just at school? Oh, in so, school. Wait, so are you saying in the sense of like giving yourself a grandiose moniker or just yes. changing your name? No, it's the moniker. So then I just started signing my name my name in like third grade. I don't remember what, what, what age. You don't remember? Stephen Lim the Great. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that for a while. I did it as a joke for a while and then I got used to it. And then I think my parent, my, my teachers got like... They were like, hey, you can't what be the, doing this. Who? What kind of child did you they were raise? They are like, this is a society, young man. It's like, do you not understand irony and comedy? And I always I always thought it was cool in grade school when people would be like, I've got, I'm changing my name. I had a friend, uh, Patrick, in grade school who at some point was like, everybody start calling me PJ. My middle name's something with a J. Wow. Like, I, I'm PJ now. Why? <sighs> what? 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 Is it like somebody else named Patrick? And so you're just like, I want to make my own thing. I don't know. There weren't enough Stevens in my classes for me to be like, I got to change my name. There weren't a lot of Stevens? No. Oh, interesting. I mm-hmm. feel like I had some Stevens, a lot of Brian's. I yeah. was the only Shane, and I used to always be bummed about that. I was like, there's only, there's no other Shane. Oh, you wanted another Shane? Now I don't. Now I'm happy and content with my, my name. I. I was so self-conscious of being same as other people that like, I remember I bought a sweatshirt in like middle school, you know, the, like the Mason high school sweatshirt. Sure. And then like, I saw somebody else wearing it. And I, and <laughs> because I saw somebody else wearing it, I, at your high school, at my high school or middle school, I just, or middle school. I just hid the, the shirt forever and never wore it again. Even though I love that sweatshirt, <laughs> that hoodie was good. That William Mason or was it high school or middle school? Whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. But it makes sense that someone else would be wearing that because you were going to the same school as them. <laughs> I know, but uh, you what do you do in that situation when somebody's wearing the same outfit as you? I remember very uh, vividly, sixth grade, uh, we probably went to like Kohl's or something before the school year started to pick up a few new duds. And there was this like, <laughs> I remember the specific shirt that I bought. It was like velour. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I bought a velour <laughs> shirt with like a zip up. It was like a zip velour polo. Okay. And I was like, this is what I need to be wearing here this year. Nice. Sixth grade. And um, the first day of school, there were like two other dudes <laughs> wearing the exact same shirt. Yeah. And we were like, we all went to Kohl's, huh? <laughs> what, were you embarrassed? No, I think we embraced it. I think we all took a picture together. And then do you, do you stop wearing it or, do you just, or did you keep just living life like? It stayed in the rotation. Well, see, I, I can't do that. I can't. I, I, it's gone. It's gone. The moment I see someone else wear something that I'm wearing, I can't. I, I, need, to, I need to grow up here. Because I don't like, what do you do when you're wearing the same thing as somebody else? Is, is the correct social decision to just laugh and make a joke of it and then like take a photo or like ignore it and pretend nobody notices but then they're all noticing i think you have to acknowledge it and then because life is fleeting uh you know just have a good time with it just, what, what 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 are the did, implications did your, there did you your know? parents teach you how to like deal with situations like that like social situations at all no i don't i mean i don't know i don't know if they taught me that i don't really remember them being like i don't know here's what you do with Maybe their attitudes just sort of, I feel like my parents are both very easygoing people, so it's possible yeah. their attitudes just sort of organically rubbed off on me. No, I, I mean, I was definitely socially uh, behind Yeah, as a kid. Yeah. There's so many things I can go into right now that- Well, you're still sort of a that. little socially oh, behind. Oh, yeah, for you know? sure. But <laughs> but at this stage, I'm like confident in myself to yes, be cool yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Was back I'm then- having, I'm having a little bit of fun there. Yeah, you know. no, no, it's true. You don't yeah. have to, you don't, yeah, it's okay. What was my topic again? This one I, I designed for Ryan, because it's about flossing, and his dad's a dentist. Ryan very shamelessly says that he never flosses. Well, that's why I'm, I, I thought about this, and I really want to discuss it, because... He has no can, shame about it whatsoever. How can the son of a dentist... Son of a dentist? <laughs> not floss. <laughs> I don't know. Do you floss? Yes. Every day? Every mo uh, every evening. You and I like, don't usually do it in the you, morning. You actually do I, it? Yes. Because I'll go through stages where I'm like, these three months... There were times I in my life where I didn't day. do it every day, but... Uh, I would say as of like the past decade or so, it's every night. How do you make time for that? Uh, it's, I mean, it takes 20 seconds. Uh, maybe like a minute and a half. I feel like the more you, got some somebody wow. stole our food. Breaking, breaking. I think he just didn't drop it. Somebody stole our food. Wait a second. Just Somebody this, stole. This guy, Fred, just took our $55 order and left. Fred. Fred, you are on the naughty list. Uh, no, I think what happened was he tried to call, but then my phone recognized it as a spam number, so it immediately sent it to voicemail. Mm. But then he didn't leave any message on Postmates or any picture of where he left it. He just took it and marked it as complete. All right. All right, so we're, we're talking about flossing. We're talking about flossing. How can the son of a dentist not floss? Because you've said before to me that you don't floss. I don't floss. How? That's the that's the one thing that dentists say is to floss. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just it's, it seems annoying. <laughs> but then, how do you keep your gums clean? I brush my teeth pretty hard. I don't know. Does your dad not care for? Oh, my like, dad thinks I should floss. It just takes so much time. And then that's also, what I was saying, Shane. if you fall, if you fall out of like the flossing habit, then your like gums start to hurt and bleed when you floss the next time, and it's just really painful. Uh, there have been periods of time where I've done it, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get into flossing. And then, like, seven days later, I'm like, this it's, it's not like a hobby. It's a it's a hygiene thing. Yeah, but if I brush my teeth for two minutes, I think I'm also no, good. No, no, it doesn't get no, doesn't get in there. You brush your teeth, you floss for your gums. No, yeah, I don't, I don't floss. The fl flossing doesn't take your as long. Your brother's as brushing. a dentist. You're the brother and the son of a dentist. That's right. Yeah, I, he he doesn't floss either. I mean, he flosses. My dad, and my brother floss. I don't think my mom flosses though. Your your mother doesn't floss. No, the wife of a dentist. I mean, her gums look fine. <laughs> it's just crazy because like if I don't floss for more than like three weeks, my my gums will just go. They'll just deteriorate completely. That's crazy. And I don't know how you can survive. Sounds it, like it, you have some like candy gums. Shouldn't take as long as brushing your teeth. It's quick. It's like I, it's kind of hard to get them out, get them around there, and get it in the back. It's, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Well, that'd be just like sleeping in Ryan's unflossed mouth. It can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses, and it's just plain gross. 
Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Now, these sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors! And lucky for you, you don't have to compromise to get both cleanliness and comfort, as Miracle Sheets feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels without the high price tag of other luxury brands. And if you got one of those people in your life that's just impossible to shop for during the holiday season, guess what? Everybody sleeps. Miracle Sheets make great gifts. And since these come with three free towels, you get two gifts in one, just in time for the holidays, baby. Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Pay attention. Save over 40%. That's right, 40%. And if you use our promo code watcher at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, well, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher and use the code watcher to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash watcher to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. Anyway, I wanted to talk about flossing because um, they're just things in life you got to do that you got to do. But but like, you know, people say, oh, I floss every day. Sometimes I'm like, do you really like it's one of those things, like can can somebody can a human being really floss every day? I'm you, bad at routines, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I try to meditate every day. And as you know, from the last podcast, you I was said you haven't thing. been able to do it in a year, a year and, and a half. half. So it seems like you're not trying. Uh, and then like working out, I, I will go through stints where I'll work out like almost every day. And then I will go through stints where like, for instance, the past three months I have not worked out. Yeah. It's been pretty spotty for me, but I'm back on that grind, baby. Back on that. It's grind. just hard. It's what's hard your, to do routines. Workout schedule? Uh, I usually do three days a week. Super okay. early in the morning. You go running, do but, some weights. But I'm thinking before, in this lead up to the holidays, I'm going to start working in some evening runs in addition to my three mornings. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I got to work that out. So you can eat more for Santa. That's what I want to get, you know? I got to work out now after work today. It sucks. It's, I hate working out so much. When did this podcast become, let's complain about our lives? No, uh, I feel great about my life. Oh, okay. No, right. just... In this current moment, I don't feel good. It, you gotcha, know what? Gotcha. When you, working out is a is a uh, uh, privilege and a pleasure. You know, it really to, is to be to be able to to run and and jump. You should relish it. So my last episode of the year, you guys are going to be taking over after this, you know, because I'm going to go. We're taking over. Well, I'm shooting something. Uh, not be in L.A. I'll be gone. He's going to be bit. gone for a little bit. It's so just going to be the nasty boys. Nasty That's boys. right. The bad. The end of the year. I have one thing I want to say to you, Ryan. Yeah, what is what? Just what? I want you self talk. I want you to learn to shut that brain off after six PM. It's impossible. I but Shane does it. You gotta get Shane boundaries. I man. I, I don't know if I, I'm capable of it. And like sometimes here? at work things go wrong and you just gotta let it happen till morning. But just if, let it happen. if I don't fix it, it's not gonna get fixed. That, what so let's talk to Shane, the expert of boundaries. What do you do if that happens? And you're like, oh, it's not going to get fixed. Uh, give me an example. Um, you know, your accountant says to you, I need this document by tonight or else I won't file your taxes. What do yeah. you do? Um, I'll be like, well, you know, I guess I'll have to pay a fine. Oh, yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, that, that. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I, I, but I want you to do your, that. Ryan, what's your topic? What was my topic? I don't know. Steve was talking about flossing. Is there anything else to say about flossing? No, I just it's one of the things that you know when people say like, oh, I uh I don't pee in the shower. I don't believe you. Got you. It. I don't believe you. And then people say I floss every day. I don't believe you. The only thing and I do in the do. shower is pee. That's so gross, dude. It's so I don't understand the peeing in the shower, man. I really don't get well, it. Okay, what do you do when you need to pee and then you for, you don't realize that you're in the shower? I hold it like an adult. And then after the impossible. shower is done, I will pee. It's not impossible. It's a drain. Do you not pee before you get in the shower? I know. What I, is I going on do, here? But if you forget. Sometimes if I have to pee before I get in the shower, I'm like, I'll just hop in the shower. That's you know, disgusting. Wait till I get in the shower. Why is it disgusting? That's absolutely it's gross. It's all pipes. Yeah, then why don't you take a shit in the shower? 
Because that's you're, different. You're how's that different? It's pipes. That's waffle stomping. <laughs> yeah, but it's pipes. It, how does that make any difference? Those pipes aren't built for solids. You know, why is it? I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, you're, anyway, you're, we'll move also, on. Also, like when you're peeing, there's like a mist to the shower when no, the steam is, is coming up. Say. There's no. There's mist. like what a literal about? like. I, I believe it was actually Keith Habersberger who had mentioned like you're literally you're there's literally a, there's setting a, there's the misty BuzzFeed aroma dub. of piss yeah, in the a, shower. There's a BuzzFeed uh, debatable. That's probably what I'm yeah. thinking of. It's it's truly just gross to me. Well, hey, you know we all live different lives. We we should we should slow down the bathroom talk. We, we, people don't want to hear about the bathroom talk. Okay, I'm sure there are people out there that are screaming at either of us right now. Like it's okay to pee in the shower. I it's not it's, okay to pee in I the shower. I think it's I, I, way in. You okay, know? so anyway, here's here's the crazy story about the office recently. Yeah. Yeah. We were looking at the fridge and there was a sandwich that had been in the fridge for a long time. Yeah. We we're like, oh, we should throw this out. This is kind of gross. Whose sandwich is this? We pull it out and the name on the sandwich is like, well, there was a Tim. Yeah, there's a weird name on it. And nobody here. I saw that in the fridge. Is named that, whatever that name was. Let's just call him Tim. Do you think it's possible that some, uh, that was like maybe the name of the person who picked up the order for Postmates or DoorDash or whatever? I don't know. I'm going to stop interjecting, but what if it was turkey, lettuce, mayo? Yeah, that could be. And it, it was like a L. Turkey, yeah. lettuce, mayo. Uh, the, the name was the name was on there. I remember seeing that sandwich in the fridge and yeah. being like, who the fuck? And you're like, oh, this is, you know, maybe we should check if this office is haunted. I, huh. I I know a few ghost hunters myself. Yeah, that they, they, they take sandwiches out of the fridge all the time in my travels. It's <laughs> bad for your eyes, Ryan. Is it? Yeah, oh, it feels so good though. It's, it's bad <laughs> for your. I think it's bad for your rods and cones. I, Ryan is rubbing his eyes. Um, oh God, it feels so good sometimes. I can't resist an itch when I have it. Like if it's like my leg itches, it's impossible. You do um. What is the thing that you do when Check you're stressed? You go like. Oh yeah, that thing. I do that thing all the time. Furiously rub your eyes? No, there's like the spot, because I have contact, so I can't rub my eyes totally if like my eye itches, but I could like rub the little part that's like right here near your nose, like the bridge of your nose, uh-huh. and I rub that. Does it help you de-stress? It help, no, it helps me get rid of the itching sensation. Oh. All right, Ryan, we should move on to your topic. I think I'm going to switch my topic to the pee. No! The pee? No, what were you going to talk about? I want to get waste. to the bottom of it. I want to get to the bottom of it. it. Exactly, it's human waste, so why are you just peeing on the ground? It's so weird. Like, yeah, I, you can drink human pee one. I think one, one or two times. Yeah, that's that's not really like you know the shower is designed to clean. It's a cleaning device. You so you'd be you'd be comfortable licking that floor. If you said you'd give me a million dollars to lick the floor, I would. Do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, if I give you a million dollars, what a, what when you're washing your ass in the shower? Yeah, all that dirty ass water is going down there on the ground. Yeah, but that's a far cry from taking an actual shit, like actually doing. I mean, it's it. still residue, you know. Like if yeah. the water, it's if dirt. The, it's if the it's only grime. primary thing that's it's cleaning grease. the pee off the ground that doesn't make it into the drain I, is I, water. I'm just gonna say I think you're a little too uptight about it, man. I don't disagree. I, that's fine. Okay, if I pissed on your leg right now. And then I was like, don't worry, I'm going to spray water on it. Would you feel f- completely satisfied? That I mean, I'd have some questions, but if you cleaned it off with soap and water. Then no, no, not soap and water. Yeah, just soap water. and water, because that's what's going on the ground after I pee. So you're scrubbing soap on the ground in the shower. I mean, there's plenty. Or of... is it falling soap that's cleaned I, you and I'm now is falling on I'm the ground? You, I get a good lather going. I think you're, you're just, you're just, look, if you're. If you're a neat freak about this and you're a germ, that's fine. That's okay. I think I'm trying to figure out why it irks me so much. I think the reason why it irks me so much is because you are, you and all the other shower pissers out there are able to get what you want no matter what. But I am no- I'm tired of letting you win. I have no say in whether or not I, yeah, I am okay with you it. You sort of have to live with that. I have now. to live yeah. with people, animals, peeing in the shower- and just being like, ah, fuck the next guy. You know, he could he could handle it. It's that's pissed. that's life, baby. Yeah, that's, that's, that's life. just life. There's a lot more that we could be mad about in life. That's than, like than walking that. past a pile of garbage on the street and just throwing your bottle on top Completely of the garbage different. on the street. I think that's very different. It's just like, ah, oh, it's already someone else did it. Might as well do it too. Very different. I would I, never do that. I've seen people in L.A. just like roll their windows down and just like throw a big gulp on the. I was like, that's Come the on, same. Th- I don't. You see how I could see that as cognitive dissonance? Right? No, that's insane. No. One of them. One well, is throwing trash out into the world, not being clean in litter. No, you're you're a weird zealot about this, man. These are very different things. No, that's crazy. I'm just saying if you are about cleanliness, you don't pee in the shower, you don't throw trash on the ground. But if you're like, no, don't throw trash on the ground, that's not clean. 
when one of the you're literally throwing your human trash on the ground. Those like, are not the same you're, thing. You're you're, you're a weird. This is a little too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is a weird comparison. Oh, I don't yeah. know what to tell you, man. Well, I think you're both monsters. That's fine. It, it, and what you need to understand is we don't care. That's fair. Oh, it's clear you don't care because you do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a you know it's a fascinating topic, and and uh, I don't think we're gonna land anywhere. Uh, concrete uh we encourage you if you're listening to this if you're watching this on youtube leave us a comment let us know hey tweet at me tweet at steven specifically yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want to hear your thoughts he does i he want really a bunch does. of weirdos tweeting at me saying <laughs> yeah like, hey you're you're a monster for not pissing in the public shower. yeah yeah <laughs> um thank you for listening uh we'll see you next week when we've got a special guest in steven's absence Ooh. so that'll be fun uh like and subscribe Rate us five stars, all that, all that good stuff. I'm gonna uh, miss you all. He this, will. This podcast has been uh, my favorite thing the past few weeks, and so cool. Yeah, it doesn't crack top three for me, but that's good to hear for you. <laughs> my number one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you next week, everybody. Bye. See ya.